Okay, welcome to a video on the mean value theorem. The goal of this video is to apply the mean value theorem and also to solve an application problem using the mean value theorem. And this is what the mean value theorem states. If the function f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, then there exists a number c in that interval such that f prime of c is equal to f of b minus f of a all divided by b minus a. Let's take a look at this sketch to help explain exactly what's going on here. This point right here would be a f of a and this point right here would be b f of b. So this side of the equation, so this quotient right here is just the slope of the secant line as we see in orange. This is y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. And the left side, f prime of c, would be the slope of the tangent line at x equals c. So what this is saying is the slope of the secant line is equal to the slope of the tangent line at x equals c. So again, in orange we have this secant line, and what we're saying here is that x equals c, this tangent line has the same slope as the secant line. It also looks like there'd be another value of c somewhere over here where the slope of this tangent line would also be equal to the slope of that secant line. So all three of these would have the same slope. So in summary, the mean value theorem states that there must be some c where the slope of the tangent line is equal to the slope of this secant line through those endpoints. Let's go ahead and try an example. We want to apply the mean value theorem to this function on the interval from zero to one. For the first step, we'll determine the slope of the secant line through these endpoints. So we need to determine f of one minus f of zero, all divided by b minus a, or one minus zero. Well, one to the two thirds is going to be one minus zero, all divided by one, that's one. So now we need to find the x value where the slope of the tangent line would also be one. So we'll find the derivative of the function, set it equal to one, and solve for x. So applying the power rule, we'd have two thirds x to the two thirds minus one, that'd be negative one third. We want to know when this is equal to positive one. So let's go ahead and solve this equation. Multiply both sides by three halves. Go ahead and write this up here. We have x to the negative one-third power must equal three halves. Now we want x to the first, so we'll raise this to the reciprocal power, or the negative third power. This would be x to the first. Now three halves to the negative third power is the same as, would be three to the negative third over two to the negative third, which is equal to two to the positive third power over three to the positive third power. So x is equal to eight twenty-sevenths, which is in this interval. So that's our value of c we're looking for. So now we can see pretty well graphically that the slope of this line would equal one. And you can also see that when x is approximately eight twenty-sevenths, this tangent line would have the same slope as that secant line. Let's try another one. Again, the first step is to determine the slope of the secant line through these endpoints. So we need to find f of two minus f of negative one half divided by two minus negative one half. Okay, so for this one it might be helpful to use the graphing calculator. Let's go ahead and type our function into y1 of x divided by x plus one. Don't forget the parentheses. Now we'll go to the table. We want to know f of two, point six repeating, that's two thirds. Let's go ahead and find f of negative one half as well. So our numerator is going to be two thirds minus negative one. In the denominator we have two minus negative one half or two plus one half, that'd be five halves. So now we have two thirds plus one, that's five thirds, divided by five halves. 
Remember that's the same as five thirds times the reciprocal, two fifths. So it looks like we have a slope of the secant line of two thirds. So now we want to know when the derivative would equal two thirds because that's where the tangent line would have the same slope. So to find the derivative here, we'll have to apply the quotient rule. So we'll start with the denominator squared. Then we have the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, which is one, minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, which is one as well. So the derivative equals one divided by x plus one quantity squared. We want to know when this is going to equal two thirds. This is a proportion, so now we can perform cross products. Two times the quantity x plus one squared must equal three. Let's go ahead and take that onto the next screen. So again, we'll have two times the quantity x plus one squared must equal three times one or three. Let's go ahead and multiply this out and see if it's factorable. So we'd have two x squared plus four x plus two, and then we'll subtract three. Okay, so this is not factorable, so now we'll have to apply the quadratic formula. So we have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c all over two times a. We need to simplify this. 24 is two times two times six. So we have negative four plus or minus two square root six all over four. Simplifying this, negative one plus or minus square root six divided by two. Remember that our interval is from negative one half to two. So negative one minus square root six divided by two is, is less than one half. So the only value of c that we can use is negative one plus square root six divided by two. Let's go ahead and convert that to a decimal. It's approximately 0.2247. That'll be helpful when we look at the graph next. So what we found is the slope of this secant line was two thirds and when c is approximately 0.2247, or somewhere in here, the slope of this tangent line is also equal to two-thirds. Let's take a look at an application problem with the mean value theorem now. Two police officers equipped with radar are three miles apart on a freeway. As the truck passes the first officer, it is clocked at 55 miles per hour. Two minutes later, the second officer clocks the truck at 52 miles per hour. If the speed limit is 55 miles per hour, should the truck receive a ticket? The first impression would be no because it's only been clocked at 55 and 52 miles per hour. But using the mean value theorem, we can actually gather some more information from this situation. First thing, our rate is in miles per hour and our time is in minutes. And our time is in minutes. So we need to convert two minutes into hours. So two minutes since there's 60 minutes in one hour, this would be 1 30th of an hour. Okay, so what we're gonna do is find the average rate of change in this situation. Remember the equation distance equals rate times time. Well, if we solve this for r, rate, we would have the rate is equal to the distance divided by the time. So if we can find the average rate for these two minutes, It'll help us determine if the truck should receive a ticket. Well, the change in the distance was three miles, and the change in time was two minutes, but that's equal to one thirtieth of an hour. Well, three divided by one thirtieth is the same as three times the reciprocal. So what this tells us is the average rate of speed was 90 miles per hour, even though the truck was only clocked at 55 miles per hour and 52 miles per hour, Somewhere in this three miles, that truck must have hit a top speed of 90 miles per hour at least once in order to travel that distance in that amount of time. So this would be the slope of that secant line. And, therefore, and so the mean value theorem verifies that some other time, this truck must have reached a speed of 90 miles per hour. I hope you found these examples helpful.